are going to be very interesting. Um, we will be uh, working very hard and I think uh, the ball is in the air. Uh, we're not calling anything on lower house seats but uh, there are certainly some to watch. Which ones? Kimberley is interesting. Um, we think uh, that um, uh, we have a strong candidate in the bass. Um, we're going to uh, put a strong challenge to, uh, to Mr Boswell. Um, yeah, there'll be some interesting seats. Fremantle? Fremantle. Oh, sorry, it's Fremantle. Of course, will be interesting, yes. Uh, we have a very strong candidate, Fremantle, um, who's uh, a local councillor, and um, we will be doing everything we can to regain that for Greens as well. Now, how much of your campaign in Fremantle will go to the whole puzzle of transition? As you just said, you want to run against Troy and Bass. No, we're, uh, we're running a, a positive alternative. Um, we believe that the issues uh, around... Uh, Adele Carl's a history now, and um, uh, we are running our Greens campaign with a strong um, can candidate who's got a high profile and has worked hard in Fremantle. Uh, so, uh, what what else happens with regards uh, to to other candidates is uh, is their business. Is that whole sorry saga sort of you know still left a bit of taste in the Greens? Look, no. I mean that's that's several years ago. We've moved on uh, very quickly from that. Um, uh, Adele made her choices and um, of course we were disappointed uh, to, to no longer hold Fremantle but uh, we are um, well and truly uh, organised for this campaign with a strong uh, Is that debacle going to make it harder for Andrew to get through I don't believe so, no. no. Look, I think, as I say, uh, we've seen a lot of this saga over the last uh, uh, years, months um, and I think people are over it. Um, we now want to talk about the issues in Fremantle. We want to talk about what uh, people are concerned about in Fremantle and um, a strong Greens candidate who will represent their concerns. Is it still a green seat? It's, it, it is absolutely still uh, a green seat and uh, with uh, you know, good hard work on the ground, um, we will regain Fremantle at some point. So you think um, Mr Sullivan can beat uh, Simone McGill? Simone. I think uh, Mr Sullivan will do a fantastic job um, and I think uh, he will, uh, he's got every, every possibility of, of uh, um, just in terms of, if we're not up, not up, not up, not up, not up, probably, um, just in relation to, if we look at federal politics right now, there's this view that uh, the voters won't go down the sort of minority unparliament path again. How are you feeling as the Greens going up against the Do you think there's enough distrust and distaste for those two major parties at the moment? I think uh, it, more than anything there's a boredom. Uh, people are very weary of the uh, uh, sort of minimalist um, debate that happens in the public arena. It's about McGowan and, and Barnett and occasionally Mr Grewals. People want to talk about real issues that are affecting them and hurting them um, here in Western Australia. And uh, that's the campaign we're running, that's the alternative we offer. I don't think people are um, afraid of balance of power situations, um, hung parliaments if you like, they're often the most creative uh, and under the previous um, government with the Labor Party uh, many progressive pieces of legislation passed that wouldn't have happened if you didn't have, didn't have the Greens in the balance of power. Whether that be one vote one value, whether that be um, uh, the um, reforming of abortion laws, um, it is a progressive combination and people are, are happy to vote for that. Look, our polling is steady and uh, and we are a party that continues to gain support. Um, people are, are pretty over the tired um, exchanges on minimal issues that go go on at the moment. You're, you're, I mean, you've just launched a, you know, free transport, public transport, for seven years. Yes. Have you worked out what that might cost? Look, that's a very good question, and of course, if we were the government, we could cost that. Uh, and if we had uh, the resources, uh, we would cost that. We are going to do some costing, but one of the progressive things that has happened with balance of power in the federal arena is that the Greens now have the capacity to cost their initiatives. Um, and uh, that's the sort of initiative and, uh, and, and direction we should have in Western Australia, so that parties like the Greens can have access to the Treasury to, to do that costing. Um, we, are, we are still a small party. We run on um, a lot of volunteer uh, energy. Um, we don't have the capacity the Treasury does, but we should have access to it.
You mentioned the civil liberties before, and the Attorney General just uh, announced some laws to um, put GPS devices on, on some serial arsonists and domestic violence offenders. And you did mention that they're introducing these laws because there was some legal concern um, over civil liberties. So, what do you think of them? Um, I think the solutions to some of the uh, uh, criminal activity in Western Australia are much more complex than the current Attorney General appreciates. Um, we know that the majority of offending uh, occurs in a very small uh, part of the population and what we recommend is restorative justice and justice reinvestment. That is you invest in those communities where people are offending and you prevent them from becoming offenders. It is a long term view, it's been taken in uh, Texas and other states in America where it has transformed justice. So you've got less people in prisons and more people um, who are uh, working productively in the community. Um, fiddling around the edges with sort of technical things like GPSs is quite a distraction. We need a much fresher approach to justice. The Minister said this could help reduce bushfires. Uh, is that, is that uh, not something that's worthwhile? <coughs> oh, reducing bushfires is always worthwhile, but I would suggest um, that we need to tackle the reason why people are bored and might um, choose to go out and throw matches. Um, you know, we need to engage the community rather than punish them at every turn. And um, we need to uh, have more education about the dangers of bushfires, more reality checks about what that actually means. Um, successive governments have taken a punitive approach. All that has done is blown the prison budget through the roof. We spend more, more on prisons than anywhere else in Australia. In prison, more people, particularly our Aboriginal West Australians, and uh, it is time for a fresh new approach, which says, let's tackle the problem where it's starting. Let's not have a kind of end of pipe solution, which is locking up more people. You talked about the cumulative. Is, is, is your campaign purely and solely James Price point? Oh, James Price Point is, 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 is a central issue, obviously, in Kimberley, and um, for the government, is not going to go away. Uh, there is a fantastic campaign being run in the, uh, Kimberley to assist the community uh, to, to be heard in their opposition to industrialising Kimberley. Um, but there are other issues there, clearly, um, in terms of um, disadvantage in Aboriginal communities, health issues, mental health issues. All of those will also be tackled. Have you been able to work out what sort of percentage of what the community uh, view is on the James Price point development? Have you been able to sort of assess that it's 50 50, 60 40, 70 30? Um, I'm not aware of any specific statistics that would, would, would indicate that. We know that the community is still passionate about um, ensuring that uh, we don't have a gas hub at James Price Point. There are answers, even the company itself is looking at going offshore. Um, and uh, that would be a solution welcomed by many people in Kimberley. But what about, yeah, what's your policy on them going offshore though? There's still environmental risks there. There's environmental risks with oil and gas wherever you go. Uh, and our solution in the long term is renewable energy, actually. Uh, and, uh, you know, in investment in big uh, solar, in wave energy. Uh, I know that's kind of a big picture answer, but uh, yes, you're going to have risks uh, with oil and gas, whether it's onshore or offshore. So is there room for a compromise with James Price Point? Look, I think um, uh, the fact that the, the company itself is, is now quite keen at offshore processing, uh, then uh, that's the way that we should be heading. And you'll support, you'd support that? Yes. If, if, if something was announced before an election that that's their plan, you'd be behind that? Yes. Thanks very much. Thank you. Good luck. Okay.